watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Funding for Shalom TV has been provided by the following. and by viewers like you. Hello, I'm Mark Golub, and few figures loom as large in modern Jewish history as does Yitzhak Rabin, former chief of staff of the Israeli army who led Israel to its momentous victory in the Six-Day War of 1967, and who later in life as a two-time prime minister became a champion for Israel's reaching out a hand of peace to the Palestinians. It was Yitzhak Rabin who shepherded Israel through the Oslo Accords of 1993, for which he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, together with his colleague Shimon Peres and his longtime enemy Yasser Arafat, with whom he shook hands on the lawn of the White House on September 13th of that same year. And it was Yitzhak Rabin who, in 1995, as he led the peace movement in Israel, was felled by an assassin's bullet as he departed a Peace Now rally in Tel Aviv. To be sure, Yitzhak Rabin is also a controversial figure in Israeli history. There are those who claim he made a serious mistake by giving arms to the Palestinian police that it was Rabin who elevated the stature of Yasser Arafat, that Oslo was in many ways a failure, a mistake, and that his vision of peace was always a naive dream. But for most Jews, inside Israel and without, Yitzhak Rabin is viewed as a courageous statesman, offering hope to a people exhausted by occupation and incessant terrorist attacks. Yitzhak Rabin was the warrior who stood for peace, and he was often eloquent in his statements in support of peace. Back in the early 1980s, when I was first doing my program, L'Chaim, strictly on radio, I had the wonderful chance to sit with Yitzhak Rabin, and we feel that your hearing a few moments of that radio interview will give you a different sense, a glimpse into the man. And when we met, I asked Mr. Rabin to comment on the days leading up to Israel's preemptive strike against Egypt and Syria in the Six-Day War of 1967. Here's some of what Yitzhak Rabin had to say. Well, as long as I'll be alive, I'll never forget uh, those days. Uh, first, allow me to say that uh, I don't consider what happened uh, in the Six-Day War as a preemptive, preemptive war by Israel. I believe that all the wars that Israel has, ha has waged uh, against the Arab countries were justified for the simple reason it was and it is unfortunately even today that most of the Arab countries in the past all of them stressed that they were at war with us it was not a war that was initiated by Israel it was a prolonged war that the Arab countries declared against the very existence of Israel there were ups and downs in terms of the escalations of hostilities actions by the Arab countries. But as long as they have stressed that they were at war with us, I don't believe that any one of the wars were initiated by Israel. We were put before a condition that the, the all security of Israel, I would say even more so, the whole future of Israel was at stake. Therefore, even though I said I can't promise you results that will be like a, a journey through the Sinai, 
it's going to be, I said, a very painful uh, war, but I see no choice to Israel if we would like to survive as a Jewish independent uh, state. It was not so easy. We waited what is known in the, his, in the history of Israel, the waiting period. We gave the United States time to bring about a solution by peaceful means to use its influence uh, through political means to bring about this political solution to what w was created by Egypt and to restore the situation to what it used to be prior to the 15th of May 67 when Egypt uh, carried out an act of war and massed all its forces into the Sinai uh, adjacent to the lines uh, with Israel. The United States first promised to bring about an international flotilla that will secure the innocent passage through the Straits of Tehran. Later on, of course, we were told that no such flotilla would be formed. And we realized that no one, really no one, would move its finger to to come to the support of Israel. I believe that uh, in the Six Day War, the issue was so clear, so direct, so personal to everyone. And the threat was so well understood by everyone in Israel and by all of us together. And we went to war not because we wanted, because we realized that we had no choice. Therefore, it was a kind of a war that uh, we fought and we were sorry that we had to fight it. We were sorry also to see the Arab soldiers got killed in service of fanatic anti-Israeli feelings. We didn't feel that they even understood what for they were fighting. They just followed the totalitarian regimes, the fanatic ideas of President Nasser of Egypt and other Arab leaders. And I think it was expressed in many ways. After that war, there were many talks among young soldiers that for the first time in their lives experienced a war. And I heard them, and I heard them talking about how they managed to avoid killing Arab soldiers when they felt it was not necessary to achieve their objectives. How they felt sorry when they had to do it for the purpose of defending their own country. This is why I gave in my speech on Mount Scopus uh, after uh, Jerusalem, uh, became again a united city and for the first time after 2000 years the first time a united free capital of the state of israel i felt that i expressed the feelings of most of the soldiers not just my own um, my own we are practically have not fought five wars as normally we say it's a one long war of over 30 years that was hopefully ended for the time being only with one Arab country, with Egypt, when the peace treaty between our two countries was signed. Still, it's a long way to go till a real peace will be established. I've never lost faith. I'll never lose faith. I've got patience. Well, Jewish faith, tradition, teaches, teach us that there is no dechikata uh, ketz. You can't push the end. And it has been always not so easy for Jews, no doubt, to try to do what, what there is no precedent to it in the history of mankind, to revive 
our life after 19 centuries again in the only place where Jewish independent life can come up in Eretz Israel. And those were some of the thoughts of Yitzchak Rabin in his own words. Yitzchak Rabin was only a human being. He was not a god. He made many mistakes during his lifetime, both military and political. But he will always be remembered for his idealism, for his passion for peace, and for his being willing to give his life in service to the state of Israel and to Klal Yisrael, the entire Jewish people. He was one of the giants of early Israeli life, and his memory will forever be a blessing. The candles are out, and the night is standing still. And the silence in the square cries out to the moon. He was singing a song for peace that was his truth. We never saw him as happy, as bright as he was on that night. And we never will. He was marching to a drum that was his own. He was a farmer boy with a dream, so brave and tall. When he fought in Jerusalem and stood by the wall, we never knew he'd be the brightest of stars shining so far and be so quickly gone. Shalom, Saber, can you hear us way up there? Can you hear your song? Can you feel it growing strong? Shalom, Saber, don't you know how much we care? We are moving on and your song is taking us there. Three shots in the night, he fell to the ground. And we stood there lost and confused, alone and ashamed. So many questions left to ask, so much to explain. How could this happen right here in our state, that a man full of hate could strike his brother down? was laid to rest and born in Jerusalem. He had presidents and kings at his side with tears in their eyes. Behind his courage and strength, he was so quiet and shy. The song he sang was so close to his heart, it was stained with his blood. And there it stayed till the end. Can you hear us way up there? Can you hear your song? Can you feel it growing strong? Shalom, Amen. Don't you know how much we care? We are moving on, and your song is taking us there. Shalom, Amen. Can you hear us way up there? Can you hear your song? Can you feel it growing strong? Shalom, Abed. Don't you know how much we care? We are moving on, and your song is taking us there. Shalom, Abed. Yeah.
Shalom.